Uh, fuel has to be very high. Yeah, well, I got exercise myself here. They're going to turn. They will. TV not on. I don't know. It is your fault. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the October 26, 2015 Selectmen's Meeting. Number one on our agenda, we have public comment. Any public comment? Please join us at the podium or the table, whichever you prefer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. A little background, Dave Conant is the name. I uh, born and raised in Kingston, New Hampshire, and 17 years ago, my wife and I sold the house and moved to Florida. And three years ago, we bought a condominium here on Kings Highway, 68 Kings Highway. By the way, uh, 25 years on the school board at San Ben Regional. Uh, why I'm here is the board of directors, I was just elected president. Good or, good or bad, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> the last guy standing and therefore I'm elected. But in any event, we have uh, Toriano as our waste people and they've been doing a good job from what I understand. And the board of directors asked me to look into what we could do about Recycling. Currently, property manager takes two barrels out almost daily to the recycling people. Uh, your location here in Hampton. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so I'm looking into it, and I came down and spoke to a young lady at uh, Mr. Welch's office, and she informed me that uh, the town of Hampton uh, doesn't pick up recycling at condos. At least that's the way I understood it. And so <clears throat> I'm wondering if there's any uh, exceptions to that. And the reason I ask, I called Troiano. They said, if you have room for a dumpster, another dumpster, which we don't have any room, if you're familiar with our condo location. Which 60, condo is it? 68 North, <coughs> North Beach Condos. Right next, right two doors from KB's. Okay, so it's like 12 condos or something well, like that? Well, it's 30 units in there, but it's oh. hush shoot and uh, it's, there's, yeah. there's no room in there for a, a um, dumpster. Dumpster, thank you. So I, I said, well, been involved in this business a long time. I'll take it to the next step up. It's Board of Selectmen. And I know you're not going to make a decision tonight because. I never used to make decisions like that, and I assume you'll do the same thing and take it under advisement. And I, I don't know uh, what we can do. You're advertising that you want mandatory recycling, and we're trying to do the best we can, but uh, it would be nice if we could have a couple of barrels that we could put out front on the uh, street side and the town would pick them up. But anyways, that's my uh, dilemma. And uh, I pass it on to you. Anything you can do would be beneficial to us. We'd be appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in this evening. You don't mind if I stay around a little bit? Just no, no, you're welcome, it. welcome. I was going to say uh, welcome to you for coming tonight. Thank you. Uh, our, um, I was very friendly with John Nickerson. He was your TV man here for years. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And after sure. I retired from Raytheon, I went to work at the courthouse in Brentwood. Yeah. And I worked with John. Yeah, he's so, a great guy. Great guy. Was a Thank, great guy. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for bringing up John's name. Any other public comment? Seeing none, announcements and community calendar. Mr. Waddell? Yeah, I would just like to say that uh, due to yeah. Mary Louise's misfortune, yeah. I had the good fortune yeah. of yeah. attending the, uh, the uh, Rising Tides. Tides National Summit at the Ashworth this past uh, weekend. 
and it was a very, very interesting summit. It was organized by uh, Senator Nancy Stiles and Mayor Bob Lister from Portsmouth, mm -hmm. and they did a phenomenal job, and it was quite a, an accomplishment for Hampton <coughs> to have a national summit in the town. There were mayors from a lot of the, uh, any, most of the cities that are affected by rising tides, they had people there. Yeah. There were a lot of people from Mississippi, Florida, <coughs> Uh, a mayor from Hoboken, New Jersey, who was extremely uh, impressive, knew her stuff, and, and very aggressive uh, spokesman from FEMA. It was just, it was very well done, and it, they didn't deal with why we have rising tides or anything. They dealt with what we should be doing to take care of the rising tides, how we can mitigate it, yes. how we can change things. So it was very informative, very good, and I congratulate Senator Stiles and uh, Mayor Lister for the program that they put together and the, the uh, that they brought to Hampton. Thank you. Mr. Just, Reinhold. Just uh, two things I'd like to uh, remind the community of is one is a uh, Tuesday, November 3rd at 7 p.m. They are having a community forum on the Hampton mm -hmm. Academy mm -hmm. uh, at the Eastman Gym at the Hampton Academy. Again, that's Tuesday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. And that's to deal with the renovations and the future plans of Hampton Academy. Second thing I'd like to remind people of is the annual fall cleanup is taking place during the week of November 16th through the 20th. Residents should put their yard waste, leaves, grass clippings, pine needles, etc., at the curb at the regular rubbish collection day in either biodegradable bags or loosely packed containers that can be easily dumped out. Please note that the vehicle collecting these leaves will be different than the one picking up the household trash and recycling. Mrs. Not, Wolseley. Nothing. Uh, was the mayor of Houston there on the flooding and the tides? There was There was a guy from Houston there. Because those, I couldn't believe on the TV they showed a whole railroad train yeah. tipped over by that water. Those poor things. Okay. Mr. I have nothing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be a, uh, like an open house at the... Uh, historical Society, oh, the yeah. new yep. little, um, what are they called? Data it? Collection. The Data Collection, collection Office uh, yes. Center. Yeah, it's right in that little mall that's uh, next to Dunkin' Donuts. And it's a big achievement for the uh, Historical Society to have, they've bought that piece of property. And it's going to really make things a lot easier. It turned out that with all of the, uh, extra things that you have to pay to make new construction viable today that's going to be open to the public. It was easier just to buy this oh. rather than, you know, we had our building campaign going on mm -hmm. for quite a while, but instead we've decided to do this. It saved a lot of money that we wouldn't have had to spend on um, fire safety and things wow. like that. So it's going to be, what is it, I forget. Left my thing in the second. car. One to four, is it? Yes. And uh, all of the selectmen are invited, and Betty would like to see some attendance. Mm -hmm. and, um, and she says that you can stop over, you know, stop in and just stop for a little bit or go somewhere and come back, and she'll, they'll still be there. So it's going to be a fun time. Is that one Sunday? Sunday. Yes. Yeah, and you're invited, Phil. Thank you. You can uh, <laughs> watch a game at the uh, 401 and the Galley Hatch and just stop over <laughs> during halftime. A boy from home. <laughs> and all of the public is invited. And Mr. Welch, you'd love to see you there. So Rusty's on the board. I'm on the board. It's a really great group. So I hope that everyone might have it that is interested might be able to stop. Good. Next, we have the consent agenda. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. I'll second it. Any comments about it? Seeing none. All those in favor? Unanimous. I would just like to thank the Lions Club for donating the two tables to the uh, yes. uh, rec department. The rec department. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yes. And for appointments, uh, we're going to go out of order. We're going to take Christy, finance director with month monthly financials. Thank you. Right. So in a couple weeks, actually October 9th, you guys should have received the 
financials for the month of September. The target was 75%. Um, the month's total income without capital reserve was 519000 Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 326000 which is over the month's target by 97000 The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at 10000 Building permits at 33, almost 34,000. Uh, departmental income at 55,000. Parking lots at 53, so they're still going fairly strong in September. And the real estate trust at 34,000. The expense summary is expenses by department at the end of September. The operating departments without debt service but with open POs was 74.69% of the budget which is under the month's target by 0.31% or $71,000. Uh, you'll notice that gap has closed in a lot at the end of August. There's a typo in your report there, it says July, but at the end of August, uh, we were under budget by 342000 so we're getting a lot tighter. Um, some notes, some accounts to take note of that are new. Um, we have a lot of the same ones that we've been doing every month, the Board of Selectmen, and town manager supplies and expenses. The total executive is now over target at 76.3%. Uh, Election administration, some accounts to note there are under the town clerk, computer support, staff development, and repairs and maintenance, and under voter registration, supplies and expenses. In the assessing department, uh, the account to note there is the contracted services is um, over budget by 59000 and the motor vehicle reimbursement is over target also. That assessing as a whole is over the target at 93.12%. MIS, the four equipment related accounts when combined together are currently at 78.4%, which is two, about $2,000 over budget. Financial administration is over target as that group as a whole is at 77.18%. Planning board advertising is now over budget by $1,168. Cemeteries, uh, contracted services, and electric are both over target. In parking administration, there are several accounts there, but the parking lots are I think there's a few more concerts maybe Fred a few yes, more concerts more. but they're basically yeah. closed so um, I don't think there's any concern with any of those accounts the police department is at 72.28 percent overall with the open POs uh, some accounts to note there there are several listed on your thing they're all this nothing is new there except for I did make note that support services as a whole is over target at 81.27 percent that um, support services does have all of the summer help in there so that isn't too concerning and then another group in that section that's over target is uh, police stations and buildings and it's at 84.01 percent but that has all of the electric and the heating fuel and all of those same accounts that we keep seeing um, are running over the fire department as a whole is at 70.86 percent with the open POs and once again there, uh, fire stations and buildings is the section that's over, and it's at 83.82%. Highways and streets is over target at 92.41. Um, that's still mostly related to snow. Some OT wage accounts, supplies and expenses, diesel fuel, vehicle maintenance, and traffic light repairs. Uh, municipal sanitation is re is running below target at 71.31%. Some accounts to note there are the tipping fees, uh, grease disposal, supplies and expenses, diesel fuel, OT wages, um, staff development, repairs and maintenance. And in that section, uh, the transfer station is over target at 85.94% as a whole. <clears throat> Animal control is re running below target, but the OT wages are still over at 124.8%. Culture and recreation, some accounts to note are under administration. OT wages, telephone, and uniform expenses, those are the accounts there. Um, the Warren articles, 
activity continues to increase there. We have the high street project going. Um, I think Exeter Road is all expended now for that Warren article, so the um, Warren articles are being spent. The 2014 encumbrances are showing that 65% have been expended to date. Uh, they're still the same large ones that we talked about when I was here last time, the traffic signal, which I know you guys have been discussing as a board, the lift at DPW, and the handgun ammunition. But I'm happy to say, Mary Louise will be happy too, I'm happy to say the handgun ammunition, I just saw the purchase order, or the, actually I saw the bill last week. So that, one, that purchase order is probably gone now. And that was a big one, a bigger one from the 2014 encumbrances. Yeah. So that will help bring that percentage down. I love getting rid of encumbrances. I know you do. That's why I pointed that out for you. Um, <laughs> under the special revenue funds, the recreation, the beach sticker donations, uh, year to date equal $14,609 with $21,602 being awarded in scholarships. The cable committee, um, I did a little expansion, expanding on my definition there for you. The fund balance continues to run above the 2014 ending balance. Um, I pointed out that if the school is granted the 36523 my end of year projections for that fund would be $29,510, um, which is fairly low considering that uh, it's usually in the 50s thousand dollars in payroll alone I think when I uh, looked at payroll it was close to the running around that 21 or 22 thousand for the year to staff that department so that's a little concerning there uh, the private detail fund the activity level did increase over the summer and it's now approximately 49,000 um, under the the fund balance is approximately 49,000 under the 2014 ending balance the EMS balance in this account continues to grow. And the wastewater system development charge um, at the end of September is 189000 But once you take into consideration the purchases that, ha that have been approved, the new balance would be $114,100 because you guys have uh, had approved some of purchases in July and then some more, I believe, at your meeting last Monday night, I think. So that is what I had um, for my report. I don't know who has questions. Questions, Mr. Wardell. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Good report. Um, it's always nice to see that, that overall revenues are up yes. in most every department, right? Yes. Which, is, which is always good to see that. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. so, so that's great. Um, the parking tickets are good. I mean, with the extra concert, not the tickets, the uh, parking lots with the extra uh, concerts, concerts yeah. and stuff are really good. Uh, some of the, the, the various, in the different departments that are over, like at 87% or 118%, some of that's due to one-time payments, right? But is other, others of that, is it due to default budget? You know, people happen to... Um, I think in a lot of the ones that I point out, like transfer station and all of those, uh, if you look, a lot of it's the OT wages, the heating and fuel. So those aren't necessarily one-time expenditures, but more a result of being locked in at the 2013 or 2014 budgeted amounts. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, most of the ones that I pointed out in this report, I think I, I tried not to point out the one-time ones anymore because we had done that so much yeah. at the beginning of the year. Right. So I try not to mention those. Um, right. These are more related to sure. ongoing expenditures. Right. Okay. So. And the other thing is that, uh, yeah, as you say, we're getting close. Yes. <laughs> we are. I also gave you guys a my year in projections today. And I think we're, I have us down to $102,141. In August, we were at 582817 okay. so. and, and, and somebody was asking for if you could do projections, right? Somebody on the budget committee, I think? Yes, I think And that, that's something did. that you could do, right? Yes. Fairly easily, right? Yep. Yeah, okay, good, thank you. Mr. Brown. A couple of things. Uh, you said the planning board's budget's over. Is that because we Just have the advertising? Yeah, is that because we have so much more? They're doing more. more? I believe so. Yes. That, yeah. so and they collect a lot of fees too. You just can't see that on this site because it goes into yeah. their right. Yeah. Other, right. Um, into and, the revenue. And the uh, Fund Twenty Five Cable Committee. Yes. Um, and we've talked about this before. And, and seventy-five percent of that goes back into the general fund. Twenty-five percent <laughs> goes into that. Yes. That fund. At some point, we may have to talk about. 
changing, changing those numbers a little bit. So maybe 35 or 45 or even 50 percent go into the fund hmm. and 50 so that we can keep that fund solvent. Would you agree? It'll bring down the revenue in the general fund, but right, <laughs> it's right, an it will, but it, yeah. it would. So, yeah. other than that, you do a great job. I know there's uh, there's at least three more concerts, so yes, yeah. I know to, they were going, going into to November. I think. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so that's good. Thank you, mm -hmm. <coughs> Mrs. Wolsey. Yeah, I had flagged the planning board advertising as well. But the planning board gets paid by the right. petitioners to uh, put out the advertising, so that comes back. Um, wastewater system development charge. Yeah. I am really delighted with that because yeah. it's $189,000 that this town never would have received. Right. And it will keep on helping us. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of other things that I flagged in here. Uh, <laughs> on page one from the uh, revenue report from federal government, all zeros. By the by, we did get, um, according to the October 21st letter that Fred passed on to us, we are going to be reimbursed $41,644.56 for the federal share of the total approved eligible costs for the um, storm reimbursement. Mm -hmm. I had almost given up hope. Cheer up, it could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that goes back into the general fund, not back that into the That goes to, and right. is it right? Yeah. But, it's money. It's we'll general take, fund revenue. We'll take anything we can get. Um, state water pollution control. We budgeted at two two twenty three, and we're still lacking one hundred and four. Are we having problems? Because I know I read about the government cracking down and not doing much by water pollution control. Reimbursement. According to when they set the tax rate, the money is still coming for those items. Oh, I, um, hope so. I believe. I think it was November and December. We get the next two payments, but when. You speak with DRA when you're setting the tax rate. They make you change all of your. Um, they tell you what you that they're what you're still expecting from the state. So, and she did have that on the list of oh. revenue that's still supposed to be coming in. Okay, because they keep, all this stuff keeps dropping off. Yes. Uh, on the parking lot revenue, sixty-seven thousand four twenty-one over, and apparently a little more to come. So that worked out very well. Um, thank you, and uh, I. Appreciate your report. Thank you. I have no <coughs> questions. Thank you, Director. So, <clears throat> now, is there a problem with the amount of money that's in the um, cable fund? No, I was just pointing out to you because I know that there's the request in from the school and you guys had discussed that, so I was just expanding on mm -hmm. giving you a little bit of extra information just for you to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you need to take an action on that request. Yeah, so and I knew you guys in. had talked about it, so I figured I would just throw a little more out there. That's all. So are they coming in? Well, we were going to invite them in. To we're going to invite them in, that. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Yes, you did a great you. job. Thanks. Um, now we will have Ed Tinker. Two thousand fifteen second half real estate tax Yeah, I'm here this evening to present uh, the warrant uh, for the second two thousand fifteen second half uh, property tax. Um, the total is twenty seven million seven hundred ninety four thousand eight hundred and forty four dollars. Um, answer any questions. I did include a couple of other sheets. One breaking down the tax rate per district and utility and. Um, so if you have any questions, I know Fred's going to speak of the rates later, but um, if you have any questions, I can answer those. Mr. Bryan, all set, thank you. Mrs. Wilson. No, all set, fine. Mr. Bean. No questions, Ed. All Mr. Set. Waddell. You need a motion to sign the warrant, Mr. Chairman. Okay, to sign I will so move, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. Sign them. We have a first, we have a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any um, other questions for Ed? I, I do have one other item I'd yeah. like to bring up. Um, okay. I did present, and I'm not sure if you have copies, <clears throat> a proposed warrant article um, that I would like to discuss. Okay. It has to do with um, appraisal reports or requests oh, yes. to do appraisal yes. reports yes. for the utilities yeah. in town. Um, it's it's um, a substantial amount of value. Um, it's also required under the statute uh, that all properties 
be revalued once at least once every five years so that would include the utilities and um, also the fact that Hampton has never done an appraisal an actual appraisal on the utilities we've always used the state values yeah and, yep. um, it just seems that it's time with mm -hmm. the environment out there that we do reports and have um, backing on our values um, and have an expert that can defend those values um, so I did put that warrant together and would hope that the board if they have any questions I can answer those okay, but do we you want to read it um, yeah, it was I can't, it's well, kind of long right now it's very well done yeah 225,000 I think you it, said. It's, the totals 225,000 yeah. it would include the seat the, the Hampton assets at the Seabrook nuclear power plant the, mm -hmm. the assets that are in Hampton in the borders of Hampton the other utilities would be Unitil Energy, Northern Utilities, PSNH, uh, Fairpoint Communications, as well as Comcast. So, f so for those six utilities, the proposals that we received, and it took a long time to get proposals, mm -hmm. uh, but we now we have proposals from uh, companies that we would like to use, uh, well respected in the area. Um, so the 225,000 would complete that process mm -hmm. for 2016. So uh, if, if the public wanted to vote for this, what would be the, their advantage for voting for this particular Warren article? Well, I mean, an advantage would that everyone would be fairly valued, meaning everyone would be fairly and equitably assessed. Uh, to ignore the utilities, when we're talking, you know, approximately $100 million worth of value, mm. would only potentially shift the burden to the residential properties mm -hmm. whatever you know mm -hmm. based on using a value now that's considered to not be fair market value uh, state values typically are not based on fair market value but assets less depreciation so it would be, it, it could be substantial um, I just think that along with that substantial portion it's it's a requirement that we should follow through on because it's never been done and it would set a precedent or at least set a benchmark that we can move forward mm -hmm. updating those values by using an expert yeah so you know I understand this because uh, we have ways that we need to be using these uh, values now right. but uh, can if the public voted this money would they be able to expect to get that money back in revenue in oh, for sure, opinion. for sure. The, the, the you know you got to look at it as a, at the value would be at just like we did the tax rate this year, and we do it every year. It's spread out over the entire town, as well as using the entire assessed value mm -hmm. to develop the rate. So the rate would be developed based on that value. That value, if it's substantially yep. greater or greater to whatever degree, it helps reduce that rate, spread it out. And what about? Um, uh, are other communities using these same people that you're wanting to use? Yes, the, the company that we are recommending uh, just completed the review of Portsmouth. Portsmouth just completed a revaluation for 2015. Um, uh, that company or that person that has come was involved in the, re the review of the other utility companies that they use, but he ended up being the primary not only uh, valuation expert, but the reviewer of that other company and actually signed off on all the values. So he's very well versed in New Hampshire uh, practices, appraisal practices, and he, he's worked all over the state. So he's very well, well respected. So you got a sense of that they valued having it done in Portsmouth? Oh, very much so, okay. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Bridal? Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, that right now the state appraises it. How does the state do it? <laughs> well, the state yeah. uses a unit method, which is a, a, a asset less depreciation, accelerated depreciation for and, tax purposes. And where do they get their information from? From the companies. Right. So they don't go out and actually appraise it. <coughs> yeah. They take the information from the, the company. Right. It's just a matter of, of gathering the, the information given to them and determining a value, uh, not completing an actual appraisal report. Or right. So there's never the state gains. doesn't do an appraisal. They just right. They just gather the information from the utility and, and, and go with that. Right. What they do is they, they'll, they'll take a utility and value it for the entire state, and then they'll allocate percentages 
to the town based on how much they assume the town to have or, mm -hmm. or what, what's given to them for information. Right. Um, in actuality, every year we get, a, we get a report from the state indicating the assessed values. And now they've actually began to be, have started to give us the percentage of ownership or the, what that value represents as a percentage of the entire value. Mm. So it, 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 it doesn't relate a lot of times to what's actually here or the market value of what's here, of what's in the town. So and we, we've already, we're in the process of reevaluating right now the rest of the town. Correct. It only makes sense to do everybody equally. Again, that, that would, everyone would be fairly in equitably assessed. It would help uh, all taxpayers um, as a whole. I can do that, yep. Mrs. Wolseley. This should save us money in court, if nothing else. Uh, this is actually, and I had not thought of this, but I think this is excellent. We ought to make it standard practice to do this every five years along with the regular reval. Excellent idea. I'd be happy to move, or if, I don't know if you want to wait on that, but I'd be happy to move to allow Ed's, uh, motion, Ed's article language uh, to be put on the warrant, and I'm assuming after review from, by council, but... Uh, Excellent idea. Mr. Bain. Yeah, Ed, I want to talk about apportionment of costs. I want to talk about legality, and uh, I want to talk about equity. Uh, is there an RSA that uh, um, prohibits us from assessing properties that are within Hampton proper? And it prohibits? Yes. No, nothing. Okay, then why haven't we, uh, as a matter of course, through uh, past ten years of the boards of selectmen, assessed utilities? Um, you know, when I arrived, uh, they were using um, state values. It was historically the way they were doing it. There was one proposal made to enter into a contract to do values and then actually a contract that would update them on a yearly basis. So it would be a five-year program, and the, but, but that was not uh, accepted. Or, okay. Or so you're telling me that we're within our legal rights to assess anyone that owns mm -hmm. private property, taxable property, within the boundaries of Hampton, New Hampshire? Yes. Okay. So within our legal rights, in terms of equity, is it fair to anybody else that owns property in town that utilities, and we'll get to the values that we think uh, um, are out there for values, that um, say Max the reporter owned uh, a hotel at the beach and he just sent in to you what he thought his value should be. Do you think that's equitable? Well, no, it's not equitable if, if, if you're not So if it's not it, equitable for Max right. and his hotel, sure. uh, it certainly wouldn't be equitable to other taxpayers right. uh, to what the utilities are doing now. Mm -hmm. So we don't think it's equitable. Uh, it's not prohibited by law. And then the matter of apportionment. There is a right. value mm -hmm. of property in this town. Yeah. If Max owns a business, he makes more money off some customers and he makes less money off others. If he rents a small room, he makes a certain amount. If he rents a suite of rooms, he makes more money. The notion that whether we make money by assessing different classes of property, uh, to me, seems fallacious. It would seem that there's a, a value of property and that the total cost of assessing those is spread across every taxpayer, including mm -hmm. utilities in this town. It's, it's, it all boils down to the fact that everything's based on total value. Individual properties are based on total value. Tax rates based on total value of all the properties as a whole, all taxable properties. So yes, that's Thank correct. You. So the notion is we're all in this together. All the yes, all Thank together. Yeah. And so any costs would be spread across all taxpayers. Correct. To assess, yeah. uh, we were involved with a uh, uh, a legal uh, issue with Nextera and uh, affiliated yeah. companies. Is that correct? That's correct. The cost of that uh, outcome with uh, the uh, pilot program in our agreement was how much uh, of a cost to the town? Um, the, 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 the total result at the end of the um, pilot would be about $1.2 million. $1.2 million? Yeah. And we were using uh, the uh, plaintiff's uh, values, is that correct? Received from the state, correct. And who was the plaintiff? Next error. Next error. So uh, it, it, it doesn't sound like there's much equ equity to people um, that uh, pay right. for tax assessors in this town, that assess uh, their property and pay an in independent, uh, on an independent basis what is assessed. And then big, huge corporations that are 
uh, five billion dollar corporations, fifteen billion dollar corporations, mm -hmm. uh, sue the town, uh, provide their own values to the state, and then how much w did this come out of taxpayers' pockets again? With next tower, did you say one point two million dollars? Will be one point two. Will be the. Uh, I think you'll get a unanimous uh, uh, support from mm -hmm. the board, and I yeah. think uh, uh, it's something as it a matter of equity to all parties in this town that it be done this year. And thank you for bringing that up. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddell. I think it's an excellent idea. I think historically you say we've not done this. As far as I know, it's never okay. been done. But historically, we have had problems with utilities on what they figured. <laughs> and we have gone to court with them, right? Yes. And we have spent almost or, or more money than this appraisal. You know, when we get when we hire the experts to go to court, yeah. we end up spending that kind of money, right? Exactly. So we would have those reports. So we'd have them right. done. We'd have it in, in as, as right. Slip and Bean said. Plus, we'd have a value that we felt was fair market value. Right. Right. To begin, you know, to, so, to, so for the tax rate. Purposes. It would give us stronger legal standing. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's an excellent idea, and I think we spend the money. We end up yeah. spending the money anyways in legal yeah, costs. So it's crazy, and it's crazy not to evaluate everybody uh, yeah, equitably. Yes, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Can in I this. get thank a you. second? I'll well, second. Them. Are we, we going to be doing the Warren articles? When are uh, we scheduled to do the Warren articles? The other Warren articles are going to be done November 9th, So we've already discussed this one, so you can. Take it up on the ninth with all the others. Oh, okay. The miscellaneous I would articles. We do it all at the yeah. same okay. time. <clears throat> I'll present. I'll bring. I'll give Fred the final. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're working on yeah. the final so wording. We Excellent. can take a look at everything. So uh, I think it's premature okay. to do it. At Thank this you, Ed. Time. That's Thank great. you very much. Appreciate Good it. Job. Thanks, Ed. Let's have a good um, night. <clears throat> moving on to the approval of minutes, October fourteenth, two thousand fifteen. Also moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. October 19, 2015. Also move. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Now moving on to the town manager's report. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the town tax rate has been set by the State Department of Revenue Administration. The town portion has increased from $7.24 to $7.91 per thousand. The county from $1.10 to $1.12 per thousand. Local schools from 745 per thousand to 764, state education from 252 to 249, and the precinct from 064 to 078. The tax, the total tax rate for 2014 was 1831. The total tax rate for 2015 is 1916. I've requested the finance department to hold on removing the encumbered funds the board voted on to discharge at your last meeting. In reviewing this matter with the Department of Public Works and Fire Departments, they are researching another method of allowing the project to be accomplished this year and hopefully at less cost. We would request the board's permission to continue working on this project and withholding the discharge of funds at this time. I am requesting the board's permission to auction the property at 27 Pearl Street if it is not redeemed by statute. The notice uh, the notice permit expires on November 9th, 2015. <clears throat> we also had a, uh, um, an email today that came in from ServiceLink Resource Center uh, advising people that uh, if they need affordable health insurance, ServiceLink can help. Free in person assistance, health insurance marketplace open enrollment starts November 1. Sign up for change plans by December 15th. Um, for January 1, 2016 coverage. If you need assistance, you can call for an appointment at 603-334-6594. Um, Mr. Chairman, we talked about the rate. We talked about uh, the encumbered funds in Pearl Street. We did receive a notice, as, as Mrs. Wolsey indicated, from, the, from FEMA <laughs> that they will be Thank goodness, sending us uh, forty-one thousand six hundred and forty-four dollars and fifty-six cents. That's the good news. The bad news is the state did not apportion their 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 uh, fifteen percent, so they're not sending us anything under this federal program, which they're required to do. But since they did not appropriate any money, it won't be forthcoming. The state's reneging on that obligation. The balance would have been paid by the town. Um, 
We've had two requests from the chairman of the budget committee. Um, and under the board's system, I'm, I'm required to come to you for approval to do that. Uh, data requests. Request first, uh, request list, complete list of all funds in digital form to be sent via email containing the fund name, brief description of fund purpose, and if readily available, the warrant article in year created. The current fund balance, beginning year 2015 balance, custodian of funds, brief descri description of process for approving fund withdrawal. Item number two is snow, ice, and sand. A background explanation of why in the five years reported only one year had sand expense uh, and only $5,125. Clarifying why sand account number being different in that budget book and I have to ask the finance department about that. They want an indication of why the number was changed. <coughs> the second item which was requested was a request for a digital copy of the Excel spreadsheet used in creating the budget. Uh, as such, I am forwarding the request to you. Selectman Bean was in attendance uh, for the ensuing discussion and voted by and vote by committee. Uh, that my understanding is this was a unanimous vote. Uh, I'll just advise the board if you do that, uh, it'll it'll make for a substantial amount of work for finance because all of our accounting system is keyed into that budget sheet so we can do reports. So all those individual connections are going to have to be removed. The data would have to be put on a disk, sent out, and then we'd have to redo all those connections again. Otherwise, anyone using that surreptitiously can get into any of our accounts, including payroll, if they know how to do it. <coughs> uh, health trust. Uh, I believe we discussed at the last meeting the health trust uh, had given us a, a clearance for an increase in our health insurance of 17.3 percent. We're asking them to please come in and visit with us and have a <laughs> chat with us about those increases and, and to see where we're going to go with that. Um, we have a request in the condo building at uh, 1044 Ocean Boulevard um, dealing with the firm maps from OSHA, from uh, uh, from the federal government. This deals with the flood control. Uh, I, I asked conservation if they would do some research for me, and they did. Um, the appeal period to appeal the, um, the dedication of these particular properties within the flood FEMA maps has expired. Mm. The only way that an individual, and I understand these folks are working with FEMA on this, that an individual in town can at this point in time challenge the FEMA allocation um, is by hiring an engineer and proving that oh their property God. is not within the flood control district. Uh -huh. uh, the other good news is that FEMA has redone its regulations and have canceled all grandfathering. Oh. What's going to happen here is over the next five years, everyone's rate that is grandfathered will increase by 20% a year until it reaches the rate of the new rate. Uh, those people who own secondary homes will increase at substantially faster rate oh, yeah. over the next five years, actually over the next few years. So that's about the best I can report at this point in time. It's out of the town's control. Uh, there is only one municipality in, in the uh, on the coast that uh, has an increased um, period of time to act on the FEMA regulations, and that's the uh, district in Seabrook because they weren't notified. So they had to have a, a, a new notification sent to them. Uh -huh. But they are the only ones who can appeal any decision from FEMA at this point in time. Wow. That, of course, mm -hmm. relates to the Dory and, and other properties along the, uh, the North Coast. Um, we had a request in the precinct, which I know Public Works is working on. Um, they want to put a, they, you know, they have bought a piece of property up on Ashworth Avenue. They want to connect to the sewer system so they can have a laboratory there for the attendance. Uh, and I would ask the board to waive all fees except the $300 inspection fee for the connection. Uh, all other fees would be waived if you approve. So they like the one at Church Street. They do. Uh, leaf collection, I believe that uh, uh, Mr. Bridal read that information, so I'm not going to repeat it, but 
we're on our way to get that done. Uh, High Street, Lafayette Road, paving starts tonight, uh, and they expect to be completed in a couple of days with the entire process. Uh, they're moving ahead, and they are within the uh, time frame of the contract. So the only thing that may affect that really is the fact that uh, we are expecting a visit from Patricia, or what's left of her, yeah. as she comes up the coast, and, and uh, we may have heavy rain on Wednesday and Thursday. So that may slow the process down as far as paving is concerned. Hopefully we're going to get it done before then. And they're trying very hard. The, I think the next to last item that I have is uh, the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, you are aware that in the original document that was signed and approved by the town for the erection of the fire station that we are to provide them <coughs> with a storage shed, mm -hmm. which I understand is being delivered tomorrow. So I'm going to invoice out this $4,629 uh, that the town was obligated to pay so we get that paid and move forward. Uh, Mr. Bean, did you want to uh, report about the budget committee, what Fred discussed? Yeah, yeah uh, in terms of the uh, Excel issue? Yes. 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 Uh, the budget committee has uh, requested that. I think... Uh, uh, it is uh, encumbersome, as Fred has said. Uh, it is uh, um, perhaps tedious, but that is the uh, cost of doing business in a free society, and uh, that is what the Budget Committee has requested. Uh, what will that cost, Fred, in ballpark? It's strictly staff time. Staff time, so we understand that, but uh, for the Budget Committee, they spend a lot of time. <coughs> Lapham's here. It was a unanimous decision, and uh, if we don't do it, uh, that issue is never going to go away. We want to cooperate fully with the Budget Committee. Uh, we're going to send that out, and then we're going to snap it back in so we remain uh, secure in our budget process. It will and, take a little time. And I, I do support it fully. So do we need a motion on that, Mr. Welch? As long as the board orders it done, it's done. Okay. Is there a consensus? Yes. Okay. Um, and um, what about uh, the... Uh, requesting the finance department to hold on to <coughs> removing the encumbered funds I think it's just prudent if we can um, so we don't end up having to reappropriate funds later um, if we can get that done we've, we've latched on to a couple of new potentials to get it done uh, that will not require us to file million dollar certificates with the utilities will not require us to pay for respacing all the lines on utility poles um, and we're looking at remote controlled, radio controlled access to lights that we can set up on our own street without having to deal with the utilities, other than having a meter installed for the electricity. So do we need a motion for this? Uh, you do need a motion to hold the encumbrance. So moved. Second. And just to clarify, this is the encumbrance for the lights Ashworth and the Island. fire station. Right. right. Yes. Yeah, that was very well worked out. Yeah, I have no problem with that. All those in favor? Good idea. Unanimous. And um, what about uh, the board's permission to auction the property 27 Pearl Street? Mm -hmm. Also move. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Questions for the town manager's report, Mr. Waddell? Um, just on that FEMA that, that you mentioned there, the, the money that they were going to we were going to get back and then yes. you said the state so so what what's the outcome the, the, the system is a partnership between the state and the federal government yeah, okay right. <clears throat> the state is supposed to appropriate 15 percent of the total funds yeah the town has to pay for 10 percent and the federal government pays for 75 percent of the allocated funds and the and the, the approved funds that they're going to be reimbursed the state in this particular fiscal year did not appropriate any yeah. funds for reimbursement for any emergencies wonderful Put, to put together and approved by FEMA. Uh, so therefore, they're not obligated to pay anything. The state's not. Correct. But we still get money from the federal? The FEMA still pays their 75%. Okay. They've allocated. Okay. All right. Sure. The other thing was, on the other request that the uh, Budget Committee had on, on the trusts. Yes. And, and the uh, going back and researching all the Warren articles and everything. It'll take a little while to do, but... But is that something the Budget done. Committee could do? I suppose anybody can do it that's got town reports or can come into town hall and read the reports, but uh, we, we probably... I, mean, I can see the digital, you know, the, the stuff, but, I, but I, why would somebody else do research for another committee? Well, 
and we don't control all these funds. Yeah, they are controlled by us, by the treasurer, uh, by other agencies. So <coughs> we don't have an objection to doing it. I just need the board's permission to do it. Okay, I mean, I don't mind, but do your own research. But that's all right. <laughs> Mr. Bean, what do you think about that? I uh, think that it's a reasonable request. Uh, we make requests from finance. We make requests. The budget committee is, is appointed. I, I, I agree with uh, Selectman Waddell. Sometimes you have to do some stubby pencil, but uh, Mr. Lapham's pointing at himself and <laughs> nodding his head. So we're too. Yeah. Um, and he can assist, but I, I get Jim's point, but I think we've got to cooperate and uh, do that stubby pencil work for the budget committee. It doesn't. That's fine. Thank that's you, sir. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Well, the um, last, last item, Mr. Chairman, would be um, I don't know if the board, after reviewing the warrant articles for the police department at last meeting, is ready to take any action with regards to those. Or you want to hold that off for a while? I, I want to get stuff to the budget committee as soon as I can. So you're suggesting that we, uh, if you're ready, take. <coughs> I think two things we can. First of all, you need a. Uh, do you need a vote of the board for the precinct? Oh, the, waive the, the fees. sewer connection? Waive yes, the fees. I do. Yeah. Okay, so I'll make that motion that we waive all the fees yeah. with the exception of the $300 inspection. The inspection. Right. Yeah. All those in favor, unanimous. Yeah, get that out of the way. Hey, now, Mr. Bridal. I'll make a motion that we, uh, af after reviewing the three, the four, uh, Warren articles that we were presented with last week from the police department that we pass those on to the uh, budget committee as as presented I could could I just make a comment on what yeah. Rusty is moving I put together because I'm going to pass this out under old business or new business I made a draft copy after reviewing their articles that Fred has sent along Fred has done yeoman labor uh, putting together all these proposals and I, I'd like um, a chance to go over the suggestions first and you'll each have a copy so we can because we need to start pulling the warrant into shape I've been over these proposed warrant articles with a fine-tooth comb and I think we need to um, to fine-tune a little bit yeah. so if you don't mind holding your motion till then because I'd fine. like we to can show hold it you for, we can hold it for a little while a couple That's minutes yep. yeah and just till I can give you this so you can take a look at it because yeah, we're still doing the Warren articles on November 9th. Right. Yeah. But maybe this will help a little bit as a draft copy for people to scribble on and Any other together. questions? No, I'm all set. Thank you. I have one quick question for the manager. On the crack ceiling, now I'm not an expert on crack ceiling, but I went down Winnetonnet Road and they had all this big equipment and they were cutting um, pieces out of the pavement. That's not crack that wasn't payment, us. But that's not. Yep. Oh, that crack was public works. No, so no, no, that was not public things. works. Well, I thought that. That was a gas company. Oh, okay. They ran a new line down there, and uh, they had to uh, go back and fix the patches. Oh, okay. Because my mental picture of crack ceiling wasn't what I saw. It's like but then again, or something. In your the your mental know. picture is that they have a what they call a, a ceiling box or a crack yeah. box, and and it's heated. They have liquid asphaltum in there, yeah. and that material is, is spread after, after the individual crevasses that are created in the roadway, at, yeah. usually at seams, uh, are blown out with a, with a, um, in a professional way by uh, oh. um, you know, okay. equipment. Then this, this material is dropped in as sand is put on top of it okay. to solidify it. And did you find out whether Unitil was responsible for that, that mess, missing piece of pavement by Falcone and St. I, I have uh, Public Works up there looking at it and, and see who's responsible. Yeah, they're in fact that road's going to need to be repaved. So I've got some things I need to bring up okay. with the gas company. Well, I just had calls, so I appreciate you oh, looking yeah, at we that. We went right up and looked at it. So thank you. When was the last time they did the crack filling? Uh, crack ceiling has not been done for at least four years. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we used to do. We've done it er, about it uh, about that often I say every five years yeah. actually it should past. be done annually yeah, but it has been. yeah. yeah. mr. Bean yes thank you uh, mr. chairman mr. Welch uh, yes, at 1332 today uh, from uh, representative Cushing to yeah. uh, yourself so to us we've got that um, he is uh, uh, putting forward the analysis of his his bill is uh, suspends the water and air pollution control facilities mm -hmm. property tax exemption 
yep. for the remainder of the biennium, biennium June 30, 2017 provides for the taxation of such property during that period and appropriates the revenues collected from utility taxpayers to the Department of Environmental Services for the State Municipal Grant Program for the acquisition and construction of water pollution control facilities under RSA 48-6 colon 1. Yeah. We just heard from the assessor we're short $1.2 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Utilities are using their own assessment data, their mm -hmm. own values. The state then does that. We lost this defendants. We lost $1.2 million. That's a big hole to fill up. Uh, I know the board is interested in uh, providing whatever support we can. And just for discussion, what is the best way forward to support this initiative? I think we need to ask Ronnie, what do you need? Mm -hmm. Bluntly. Um, <laughs> what do you need? What can we do to get it? And, and uh, how soon do you need it? Wonderful. He's a brave man. And Mr. Chairman, would there be a consensus with that? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, going forward, Solar City was on for uh, tonight. They're off. Uh, is uh, Public Works got a chop on this? I see that it's been chopped to various uh, taxpayer groups for their uh, uh, approval. Um, and I haven't seen anything coming through, and I probably missed it. But I don't see a sign off from uh, uh, Hampton Public, Public Works. Public Works was. was queried early on okay I don't had see a lot anything. of questions okay they got an awful lot of answers um, mm. I might say the answers were initially pulling heads teeth but because I think these folks weren't all that familiar with the use of landfills mm. uh, we <coughs> also had to make them aware that they have to pay property taxes on the landfill land Oh, the poor thing yeah. so so I, I, I see that um, uh, that um, uh, in, in the Energy Committee, uh, and Mr. DeRoche is doing great work, but I'm, I'm much more interested in what Public Works has to say about this mm -hmm. than uh, the Rational Taxpayers Association. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I can see that in writing, that would be great. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, and we started with you. You did. Okay. Thank you for your report, <laughs> um, Mr. Welch. Thank you, sir. Moving on to new business uh, about purchasing the snow insurance. Did you want to open that, Mr. Welch? Uh, actually, I didn't request this on the agenda. Mrs. Wolsey yeah, did, I so I have to defer to her because okay. she requested it. Mrs. And Wolsey. since I put that on, uh, Mr. Welch, we got this um, email from Robert Holmes dated today. This has a little, I think it was 14,000 and change on the first one we got. <coughs> Uh, and this one shows 50,000 and something, which sounds like a little more logical. Um. Yeah, when that came through, they, they, we actually asked them for an est a, a good estimate on what that cost would be yep. if we took the insurance. And there are two things I think you need to know. One, uh, of course, you said we got received that today. That 50,000 has to be paid by Friday. Yeah, it probably does. Um, in order to consummate the contract, and I don't see the money. Well, it says indicative premium forty nine thousand eight fifty. My problem is that we just we just squeezed forty one thousand out after all our efforts killing ourselves with the snow last year. We have another bad year, and the state's weaseling out now. I hope that forty one thousand is does not count what the state's. Oh no. Leaving us out on the forty one thousand is the net. Just just federal. I mean, everybody's bailing out and leaving us <coughs> holding the bag, and it's certainly going to cost us more than 50000 if we have a terrible winter. So I'm just a little nervous about that, and I thought I'd bring it up again. Well, I think it's something to be nervous about. Uh, I don't think the state's bailing out on us. I think they're in tough shape themselves. Since the governor did not declare those last two storms disasters, the state has to pick up 100% of all that cost on their own, no reimbursement. So they're getting nothing. And neither of the cities and towns that they, they failed to declare what an emergency mess. under what or the a counties. Confounded mess. So, um, you know, I don't know why that happened, but it did. And I know the governor appealed it twice to the president, and the president denied it twice. Huh? Um, politics is politics. Yeah. Uh, FEMA is short on money to begin with, so I'm assuming that's one of the reasons why things just didn't go wrong. Hmm. Just just the way it is. As far as the snow insurance is concerned, uh, well, I rounded up to $50,000, but um, quite frankly, uh, we're showing $102,000 left at the end of the year. That's not in the budget. That's one half of that oh, sum. Oh, I know that. I know um, that. 
and I and I realize I'm not including revenues in that because revenues go into the final the final mix. Right. And it looks like revenues will come in come in uh, slightly ahead of where we had estimated them to be. So there's a little bit of cushion in there, but not much. Uh, we may be down to pennies by the time we finish the end of the year. If you were to compare our budget to a normal household budget, and I think Christy did this when we were at three hundred thousand dollars left, mm -hmm. and it would be at the end of the year you'd have seventeen dollars left to spend. Well, there are a lot of households house, are in that position. We're down to about four dollars yeah. at the end of the year now in the comparison. So, but I'm nervous when I think you know it's not this year, but it's going to get us next year maybe. Well, and, and you'll see that uh, we have suggested to you that uh, we put money into a reserve account, create one and put the money in for unusual weather conditions. Um, frankly, I'd rather spend the $50,000 yeah. for our own needs rather than give it to somebody and maybe get something back. I mean, I yell at my daughter for bringing that confounded almanac home because I think she's doing it. <laughs> it's all her fault that it's snowing like I don't that. think so, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I just, I just wanted to think about it one more time because it's certainly making me nervous. Well, it's making me nervous too, and and you know we we have no idea what we're going to get for for weather. Weathers are changing so much, uh, conditions are changing so much in the atmosphere. Uh, we went beyond the snow and ice. <clears throat> we actually went to hurricane and tornado coverage, uh, and neither one of those are recommended. Uh, and since the hurricane of 1938. New Hampshire has had two hurricanes fall the coastline. Yeah. Uh, that's just not a very good average for over 100 yeah. years or 100 years. I wasn't shoveling uh, hurricanes though last year. Well, that's true, but you, you, <laughs> you were shoveling them. You, you may have to shovel a lot more than just snow if you get a hurricane. Uh, and tornadoes, uh, we're concerned because we're getting more and more tornado warnings oh, yeah. in New Hampshire because our climate is changing. It's one of the reasons we put uh, hundred thousand dollars in to change the glass in this building which is not safety glass um, that needs something needs to be done to, in order to protect the, the town so uh, I just don't think the money is there for the snow insurance I don't see it okay well I'm just do we know of any other towns that have snow insurance we not in New Hampshire that we're aware of mostly any private questions, mr. Waddell yeah I think on the snow insurance we're better off self-insuring I mean, if we're going to spend fifty fifty thousand dollars a year on a policy, we're better off putting that away for an emergency when we have a big snow event. If you go historically, I mean, they have it cut down so to the um, each month it has to be the exact amount of snow. So it's not the snow over the total right. period each storm. of the winter; it's the storm. So if you had a bunch of little storms, you're not going to collect on it. Right. So it'd be you know, it'd be to look at the history. Last year we had that. We could have it again this year, but then again, historically, we would not have collected for a whole bunch of years. I think the government um, agencies are predicting it's going to be less. Yeah, well, so I mean, you, you're better off, I think we're better off self-insuring, keeping the, the premium to ourselves and building up a, res a reserve that we can use for catastrophic events like that. Mr. Bridal. I agree with, with Jim. I think uh, um, this is something new, the this, this snow insurance, but if it works, and I assume it does the same way as the the water and the rain insurance works for, <coughs> for special yeah. events, yeah. Uh, that it's so tight that yeah. if we self-insured and we put that, if we take that money and start to have a special fund just for it, just so that we can have that put away, so that yeah. you know, if, if if we pay in, if we paid into it fifty thousand dollars a year for 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 six years, you know, you're going to have. Three hundred thousand dollars in there. So if you had a, something that came up like this, mm. you might be able to, you know, you self insure. Self and then, so I think that would be a better way. Mr. Griffin, who is more accurate in their in their prognostication, <laughs> the almanac or the government? <laughs> <laughs> My guess is I would go with the government. Mm. Mr. Bean. Thank you. Uh, uh, an interesting initiative. It's essentially uh, the same thing that uh, the agricultural zone in this country uses uh, quite extensively. I haven't seen the insuring agreement uh, that would be necessary to even evaluate this going forward. I think it's over the horizon, certainly another year or two. But again, I would request that if we are going to look at this and keep it as a, 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 a hip pocket a tool, uh, I would request from um, 
Mr. Holmes at uh, Spectrum Weather Insurance a copy of the applicable uh, insuring agreement, which would have coverages, conditions, exclusions, amendments, endorsements. Uh, and then I don't know the genesis of how this premium was arrived at. So um, it's, it's interesting, but it's fully incomplete, and uh, we definitely should not do it this year. I totally agree too. I mean, there might have been something to think about. If it was fourteen thousand five hundred, but uh, at fifty thousand, yeah. well, at least we just, talked about it. Yeah, it makes me like w looking at these uh, floods that they have down in Houston. I'm thinking to myself, I'm wondering if they have to have flood insurance. <laughs> I mean, what's the government do for them? Uh, you know, with all of the damage that they must have. FEMA just goes in and rescues them, and everybody else here in Hampton has to pay huge amounts for their flood insurance to oh. and then pay for all that FEMA money. Gets I'm assuming since Houston and Galveston have been destroyed several times by flooding and explosions and other things, mm -hmm. that uh, if the federal government goes with their, uh, their claim ratios, they should be closing the cities up and moving them. Yeah. Some place yeah. where they can't fly. Well, I don't think Houston is that much. Uh, Galveston is near the coast, but Houston isn't. Yeah. Houston's close I, enough. They, they got a lot of water. Up by Louisiana. Yeah. yeah. If I could just jump in, you know, that's one of the things they spoke about in this conference last weekend, <coughs> was having FEMA do more with mitigating, yeah. yes. so that it didn't happen, rather than you know being more proactive than reactive than mm -hmm. coming in and, and the, the the mayor from Hoboken and it'd be interesting to look her up you know all of you because her thing was to to redesign flood insurance so That's that it needs to be done so yeah. that it's preventing flooding rather than waiting for it to flood and then coming in with the money to take care of the flood so yeah. there's a lot of interesting things going on that we should keep when, our eyes on when used in floods it's not from tidal flooding no. It's from uh, it's bad development, and it's the same thing that happens all over Florida. Even though Florida is low standing, yeah. uh, there are certain areas every time it rains all over the whole state mm -hmm. where they have floods because the drains and stuff aren't done correctly. Look at Carolina too. Yeah, and uh, you know, but again, th those are lowland areas and they're near rivers. But unless you're near a river, most places <coughs> wouldn't even have flood insurance. So uh, you know, for <coughs> me. I hope that maybe we can have um, Nancy Stiles come in and discuss this at the board. I think it would be an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Waddell can help yeah. with what he saw there, too. It would be very interesting. I wanted to go myself, but I just wasn't able to get away. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Any other old business? Could I? Mr. No. I'm all set. Mrs. Can Wesley? I pass these out now? Yeah. You guys, it's just a draft. Here. Bandage. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that, this, it's just a draft, but I put together after reviewing all the articles what I thought might be sensible, and I have questions on some of these. So just let me run it by you. It's preliminary to our discussion. Um, on the 9th, Fred? Whatever. Our next meeting is for the uh, Warren articles. Oh, um, yeah. I checked in with the planning today, and apparently they have eight planning and zoning articles. I uh, allowed for six there, I guess, or seven, but they they have right now a figure of eight. Um, so under the required stuff, we have to put on elected election of officers, zoning articles, any bonds. Um, I'm not willing to spend any money on the marina, so I just put the washdown facility on that and the operating budget. We have regular money articles that I think are a given. The Conservation Land Fund, 20,000. Human Service Agencies, I estimated 172. I don't think that figure's locked in yet. No. Um, I'll go back to King's Highway Drainage in a minute. Police uh, facility video security system, the chief said that was desperate. The two fire command vehicles, the solid waste compactor. I want to go back to that one in a minute, too. Recreation infrastructure special revenue account. That's no tax impact. Highway block grant. I did ask for specific streets on that one. Road capital reserve fund, another 300000 so we can build it up. Forfeiture fund, federal money, no tax impact. Fire department, I would lump all together, upgrading the radio system, the phone system, and replace the SCBA station. 86,000 and public works, the loading snow blower. Then under non-money articles, accepting the lettered streets and Whites Island Street, I really can't see 
you know, discontinuing E Street, wherever it is. Amends disposal of surplus town equipment and materials ordinance. Tax deeded land transferred to conservation. Name change to the cemetery fund and land use change tax fees. Then the operating budget. Um, because some of this, I think, should be in the operating budget, not separate money articles. The household hazardous waste collection, the fire department turnout gear. Now, the snow insurance you can take out. We just got rid of that, so we can cross that off. DPW building improvements, sidewalks, and transfer station improvements. And then the possible consideration of the police department, the live fire training, and replace the tasers. So I broke that out. And the high street culvert. I just refer to the regular money articles briefly on the first page. That Kings Highway drainage for the high street culvert, I've got a problem with that area, and I want to air it out now, or we can air it out when we're discussing this thing, but I think we need to talk about that. The warrant article that went on at the selectman's request in 2014. Mr. Chairman, just a point of order, if I may. Um, I just received this. Mr. Yeah. Welch has oh, provided. Oh, that's, that's okay. A, a, if I just may, it, it, yeah. Mr. Welch has provided an orderly yeah. process for the Warren articles. I've just received this, and now we're supposed to be listening to a scheme of maneuver or plan. And I, I have no ear for it. I haven't. I mean, I just can't do it. Uh, well, so just, if you want to continue talking, but I I'll, just want to give I'll, you a few I'll, thoughts. I'll entertain uh, no yeah. no commitment to do anything about yeah, anyone. I'm thing. not out for you know. I you want to bring this up? This we all have our ideas here, I, and um, I want to discuss these all at the same time. Right, myself. but what I'm trying to say is I'd like to throw a couple of thoughts out on the table okay, now, we'll throw them out. so that when we it's not going to be that big a deal. In 2014, we voted to decommission the dam at the grist mill. The yes vote was 2100, the no vote was 800. That was, that was a vote taken and an action proposed by us. That was the Selectman's Warren article. And we never followed through with the decommissioning. To the best of my recollection, the High Street culvert was supposed to be a grant because of us de decommissioning the dam. Now we're going back, supposedly, for um, the article in 2015, Article 38 wanted to raise the 650,000 with 400,000 already in the bank to rebuild that dam. First of all, we were told initially when we were talking about the dam at all that there would be no money, no grant money for rebuilding that dam. We're on our own. There's no plan to rebuild the dam. There's no money for the plan okay, to rebuild the dam. Okay, you've thrown it out there. Now let's just move if, on. And just, let's not have our discussion Just take about a look at tonight. that culvert article because I have a problem with doing just the culvert. Okay, we got your message. Not related to okay, the dam. we're going to move on from that because okay. this isn't going to be discussed So I thought tonight. that might help Thank a little bit. Thank you very bit. much. Mr. Bean. Regarding? Did you... Um, old business. Yeah, old none, business. None, sir. No old business. Okay. Moving on to new business, <clears throat> we have Article 22, Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund, replacement of the doors at the Tuck Building. I, can, the Tuck Building. I can speak to that. I'm okay, the representative to the Advisory Committee for the Recreation. I talked to Diana today, and she wasn't able to be here. Um, she finally got the three bids in that she's been trying to get. They're a little bit over what was allocated in the Warren article, but she's under on some of the other things. Mm. I have had complaints from various people who go down to that building to take yoga classes and stuff like that, and they can't, <clears throat> get, in. They can't yeah. get in. They can't get the door open. Yeah. People who are in shape. Mr. <laughs> Bean, <laughs> Mr. Bean would probably shape. have a problem down there getting the door open. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's something, and, and she's recommended that we, that we go with the middle bidder, who Mil, Mil, Melt House Construction, which was... Oh. 7150. 71, which um, added a higher quality product, an insulated door to it, which would save on heat and things like that. Uh, and I, I, I would recommend that we go along with her. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a purchasing policy waiver, sections 718-4, period A, open parentheses 1, close parentheses dash, open parentheses 4, close parentheses, and B3. I'll second I'll, Jim. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor, unanimous. 
you so that's that includes small a yes yeah okay yeah. Uh, two authoriz authorized DPW director Jennifer Hale to become the signer for national pollution discharge elimination system so monthly move. reporting I'll make the motion a second we have a first we have a second yeah. uh, all those in favor unanimous now um, mr. Welch Sir. on uh, is it November 9th we're doing the Warren articles Perfect. we have we have an extensive list of Warren articles. Oh, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, not to not Good to bore you to sign. death with that but uh, on November 9th we are doing all the Warren articles for the miscellaneous departments uh, basically town clerk conservation um, on November 2nd we are doing the fire department that's next Monday uh -huh. And on November 16th, we're doing the Department of Public Works. Okay. So we're instructed so, by department, so we okay. won't be interrupting everybody. And we'll just do it that way. Okay. I think it makes the most sense. But I think that we, Mrs. Wolseley pointed out, we need the people, like when we talk about that one uh, for down on High Street, those people should be in here to discuss it. Shouldn't they? The people that have been doing all the talking for it to begin with. This really doesn't have anything to do with the dam. It doesn't have anything to do with the dam. No, it doesn't. Okay, so we'll have someone here that will be able to answer questions and we'll be given information beforehand. Well, Public Works and myself. Okay. Um, the, the question really is, and you need to go back and read the warrant, because the warrant uh, took a section and dealt, dealt with Meadow Pond and the culvert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to deal with. That had 147,500 in state funds, which had been forfeited. That they will not give that money to us. We still need to do it. And if you go back and read the data collection for the dam or the decommissioning of the dam, the culvert is not big enough, even if repaired, oh, according to the engineers, yeah. to stem the road from flooding and washout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to solve that problem. Okay. So we're going to have people that are going to be able to uh, stand up for all, any of these Warren articles when we That'll get ready to, as works. we discuss. Them. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, In reference to the previous police articles, yes, would sir. it be um, behoove us to to do those on the se on the second? Would that be? You may do them anytime you wish. Yeah, it sounds like we should do them on the second. Okay. Because I think we're going to have give us a chance to talk about them then. Yeah. yeah. Um. Hmm. Any uh, other new business? Mr. Waddell? What's that? Mr. Set, Bryle, thank you. Mrs. Walsley? Yeah. Mr. Negative, Bain. sir. Okay, we're going to be going into a meeting. Non meeting with council. Non meeting, non -meeting with council. So you need to adjourn. So we have a motion, motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. Second. At uh, 2018. 2018. 2018. All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous.